Hey, hello. I've put together a short video for you to take a look at. The idea is that it conveys a story. And uh, what I've done is I've put together some general scene footage, some background music and the story narration. And what I'd really like to get from you guys is just some feedback about whether you find it, is it engaging? Does it keep you um, watching? Does it draw your interest? Is it relaxing? Do you think the background music and the audio work together? Does it allow you to hear the story well, yet still capture the emotion of the background music? I'd like some comments about the cut scenes, so the way that um, the transitions take place. Is that soft? What I'm trying to do there is, is achieve a slowness. The idea is, is that you would put the story on and watch it and listen to it, or listen to it as a podcast, and the, you would find it relaxing. It was something to slow things down, because. Every, almost everything you see on YouTube today is just fast, cut, 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 cut. Um, what I wanted to do was to create something just a bit more slow and a bit more relaxing, something that was just enjoyable to kind of watch for a while. So um, please do like the video if you do like it and subscribe to the channel and click the bell. But most importantly, what I really am looking for is comments and feedback. I'd just like to know what you think. Tell me what, what you like, what you don't like, maybe improvements or changes that you'd like to see, how it could be improved, how it could be better. So um, please take a look and let me know. And thanks very much for taking the time. Here's the film. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox. Dot org. Recording by Richard Hart. White Fang by Jack London. Part One, Chapter One The Trail of the Meat. Dark spruce forest frowned on either side of the frozen waterway. The trees had been stripped by a recent wind of their white covering of frost, and they seemed to lean towards each other, black and ominous in the fading light. A vast silence reigned over the land. The land itself was a desolation, lifeless, without movement, so lone and cold that the spirit of it was not even that of sadness. There was a hint in it of laughter, but a laughter more terrible than any sadness, a laughter that was mirthless as the smile of the sphinx, a laughter cold as the frost and partaking of the grimness of infallibility. It was the masterful and incommunicable wisdom of eternity laughing at the futility of life and the effort of life. It was the wild, the savage, frozen-hearted Northland wild. But there was life abroad in the land and defiant. Down the frozen waterway toiled a string of wolfish dogs. Their bristly fur was rhymed with frost their breath froze in the air as it left their mouths, spouting forth in spumes of vapor that settled upon the hair of their bodies and formed into crystals of frost. Leather harness was on the dogs, and leather traces attached them to a sled which dragged along behind. The sled was without runners. It was made of stout birch bark and its full surface rested on the snow. The front end of the sled was turned up like a squirrel in order to force down and under the bore of soft snow that surged like a wave before it. On the sled, securely lashed, was a long and narrow oblong box. There were other things on the sled, blankets, an axe, and a coffee pot and frying pan but prominent, occupying most of the space, was the long and narrow 
oblong box. In advance of the dogs, on wide snowshoes, toiled a man. At the rear of the sled, toiled a second man. On the sled, in the box, lay a third man whose toil was over. A man whom the wild had conquered and beaten down until he would never move nor struggle again. It is not the way of the wild to like movement. Life is an offense to it. For life is movement, and the wild aims always to destroy movement. It freezes the water to prevent it running to the sea. It drives the sap out of the trees till they are frozen to their mighty hearts. And most ferociously and terribly of all, does the wild harry and crush into submission man, man who is the most restless of life. Ever in revolt against the dictum that all movement must, in the end, come to the cessation of movement. But at front and rear, unawed and indomitable, toiled the two men who were not yet dead. 